Hello and welcome to Agenda 2030. I am Toyin Nkameang John. At a high-level political forum holding this year at the headquarters of the United Nations by mid-year, Nigeria will be one of the countries selected to present a voluntary national report. It will also be the second time Nigeria will be making such presentations since the implementation of the SDGs in 2016. The first was in 2017. To this end, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, OSAP SDGs, is putting all hands on deck to ensure the success of the process. And recently, with the support of UNICEF, which brought together stakeholders in public, private, as well as international development institutions together in Uyo, the capital of Akwaibom State, for a workshop designed to carry out evidence-based independent evaluation of the performance of the country in the implementation of the global agenda. This and many more will be in focus this week on Agenda 2030. First, let's join Adesua Osuyi for the news across the world on the implementation of the SDGs. To stay with us. Kenya is set to become a global leader in renewable energy with the recent launch of a project described as Africa's largest wind farm by the country. The project will help actualize Kenya's aim of running on 100% renewable energy by 2021, as well as boost its electricity supply by at least 13%. Speaking at the launch of the project, President Uhuru Kenyatta said the sprawling wind farm of 365 turbines on the shores of Lake Tukana in northern Kenya was designed to give more Kenyans access to electricity at a lower cost. Kenya has made great strides in renewable energy in recent years and is considered one of the few African nations making progress towards clean energy. The United Nations has set a target date of 2025 for reduction of pollution of the sea by 70%. In line with this, an Indonesian man, Gary Benchegeb, has started a movement called Make a Change to help the Indonesian government tackle its problem of garbage emergency by removing trash before they get to the oceans. The movement, partnership with German tech startup Plastic Fisher, is installing innovative trash barriers called floating trash booms in Bali River to intercept and collect plastic bags, cups and other pieces of trash before they get to the ocean. Waste collected each day are taken to a mobile sorting station where they are washed and weighed before being sent off for recycling. The trash booms are built using cheap locally sourced materials. Indonesia is second only to China as the world's largest contributor to the ocean's plastic problem, with four of its rivers among the top 20 polluters globally. To bridge the gap in Africa's infrastructure, TLCOM Tide Africa will over the next 18 months invest in 112 infrastructure and tech-type startups in Africa's major markets, with Nigeria, Kenya and South Africa as focus to start with. The Tide Fund, which is TLCOM's initiative for African technology environment, will invest between $500,000 and $10 million in startups, depending on the stage of development of the organizations. The investment thesis will be guided by a mission to fulfill three United Nations SDGs, decent work and economic growth, tackle inequality and support for innovation, goals 8, 9 and 10. Around the world, one in four persons are faced with dangerous water shortages, while women and girls bear the burden of collecting water for most households in dry environments. To help combat this, U.S. company Zero Mass Water has invented hydro panels that make drinking water from sunlight and air. The hydro panels have a special material that absorbs water from air the panels heat up with sunlight and turn the moisture into vapor, which then condenses into water. The collected water is fortified with calcium and magnesium for taste, and each panel can collect about 300 bottles per month. This innovation could provide relief to millions of people around the world, especially in dry climates, as well as developing nations. The panels can be placed on the ground or on a rooftop and have been installed in more than 35 countries. 
Vertical and horizontal partnerships are major requirements in the implementation of the SDGs. It was against this backdrop that the governor of Kwara State, Al Haji Abdurrahman Abdurazak, recently visited the office of the senior special assistant to the president, during which he solicited the support and partnership on the efforts of his administration to empower women, youths, and other vulnerable groups in his state. Speaking during a meeting with the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Urilukwe Adefulire, the Governor said his government is committed to the 2030 Agenda of Leaving No One Behind, as it has already demonstrated with the appointment of high number of women into his cabinet and the replication of the social investment program of the federal government. The basis of any government or any government's administration is the SDG goals. Without setting those goals for an administration, um, you're bound not to achieve anything. So that's why we've said our first program has been to key into SDG goals and also to see how the government, federal government is going about it. Um, being a new administration, we followed the track record of the federal government. So. That's why we said first thing is to embrace SDG goals and everything else will flow. Um, <laughs> part of those goals indirectly is um, we looked at the federal government's social investment programs, which has indeed worked very well. Um, during the campaign, in villages, towns and villages, local governments, we see direct beneficiaries of the federal government program. The money, the money, trader money, money market, um, conditional tra cash transfer, um, N power. We saw its effectiveness, and therefore, thereby we had to go and domesticate the same program and pass a bill in our state house for assembly. In the health sector, it's the federal government agencies, the federal teaching hospital that the University of Ibarra, and the federal medical centers and primary health care centers at the backbone of the healthcare in the state. Um, unfortunately, the state had abandoned its responsibility in the healthcare sector. To the extent that probably only 5% of hospitals have running water. And so it's just a shame, but we're keen into it. Um, we'll do the right thing and establish um, healthcare from the primary healthcare basis right to the tertiary uh, institution. But importantly, poverty has to go. Poverty, hunger, if we eradicate poverty, there would be no hunger, as you've said. Um, so uh, we're also keen to the conditional cash transfer for elderly and the widows. We need to embrace, um, embrace our people and build a safety net so that um, no one is left behind. And um, when you leave people behind, then you're creating crisis for the government. I believe um, the women are the future of Africa. Uh, given the right opportunity and given the chance, women will take us um, to where we're going. Uh, we, we women are the pillars of our society. So that's why it wasn't difficult to have a cabinet um, dominated by women and um, we're seeing the effect now they are dedicated and delivering the services which we need. In her response, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Urilukwe Adifulure, said her office is always open to partnerships and collaboration. And while commending the Governor on his achievements so far regarding women empowerment and ensuring gender equality in his cabinet. She encouraged the governor to continue to make efforts towards the girl-child education, which she described as the most potent tool for the eradication of hunger, poverty and unemployment. We have to work together as a family, we have to work together as a, as a country, especially working with the sub-national government, the state government and the local government where the problem actually reside. So we need to work with you closely and vertically and horizontally so that we can tackle the root cause of poverty, root cause of unemployment 
uh, provide job opportunity through industrialization and uh, through agriculture and through uh, manufacturing. So, and to also empower women and get more of our children that are out of school back in school. So it is only when we do that and make our environment safe and partner with the private sector that we can be posting that we are achieving sustainable development. And if you achieve sustainable development, everybody will be happy. In a bid to scale up financing for the implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, recently brought stakeholders together for investment mapping for the SDGs. You know, the need for us to get marketable and catchy investment areas is for us to also a kind of advertise and get a foreign investors buy into our investments here in Nigeria. Let it not just only be limited to Nigerian investors. Let also foreign investors get interested and want to... Nigeria is a big market and you believe with me, any investment that is selling here in Nigeria is, is a very big uh, investment. The event sought to collectively brainstorm, identify and develop an attractive investment opportunities for the organized private sector, one that can help to bridge the present and future funding gap on SDGs actualization. This comes as recent findings show that there is a yearly public financing deficit of 85 billion Naira conventional government funding for SDGs in Nigeria. Speaking at the event, the Senior Technical Advisor to the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Bala Yunusa, reiterated the need to develop an integral approach to financing the SDGs in Nigeria, emphasizing that government cannot provide for all the funding needed to fund the 2030 Agenda. Following the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the 17 SDGs, uh, we're trying to uh, put Nigeria on the map of uh, countries that have, uh, are not only mobilizing uh, financial resources within the traditional budget resources, but using innovative financing mechanism to uh, support the attainment of the SDGs in Nigeria. And that um, led us to an attempt to uh, pilot an integrated uh, financing framework for Nigeria and that will start from mapping out the investment opportunities that exist uh, so that uh, we can mobilize additional resources uh, domestically as well as, as well as externally that can help us support the attainment of the of the SDGs in Nigeria. So what we are doing now is a whole of if you like government approach to um, understanding the investment opportunities that exist in Nigeria, where they exist, and the sort of business models that can support um, that investment to happen. Participants gave more insights. The SDGs investment mapping is basically an initiative specifically under the broader SDG impact uh, UNDP program. And what it aims to do is channel all private resources, well, domestic and international, directly into the SDGs. There's about 10 years left to achieving the SDGs and the financing gap is still very huge. So we're trying to um, establish a direct link between the development need of a country, the policy priorities, and see how we can turn that into potential investment opportunity areas that private sector can find um, enticing enough to invest in. What it will do is breach the financing gap that already exists to achieving the SDGs. We work towards making the economy to be better, industrialization of the economy. So what we do basically is to see the needs. We work with man, Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, to see their needs. We do industrial visits to see what do they need, how do they get their raw material. We work to improve those raw materials. And when those things are done, the economy will move because they will produce more instead of importing those raw material, we research to see which one we have in the country so that we save foreign exchange. So things we do. Also, we also boost agricultural sector. We bring improved seedlings to the farmers so they can produce more food for the people. This is in line with SDG 1, 2. No poverty, zero hunger. So even, even uh, SDG 5, women empowerment, we also work on it because we have a unit take care of women and their needs to see how we can help women to prosper.
we also deal with environment. Whatever we are doing, make sure that environment is taken into consideration. The processing uh, method industry adopt is very important so that you don't harm the environment while you are trying to make money. The workshop has also provided opportunity for us to look at the way to support these governments in attaining the objective of SDG. And we know that to, to achieve this SDG objective, based on the past experience and what we have in MDGs, so Nigeria needs to up to 83 to 85 billion US dollars annually to finance those, the key priority projects under the SDG project. Um, we all know that uh, the financing of SDGs is a key aspect uh, because um, especially in developing countries, the financial resources uh, required uh, for achieving SDGs is uh, enormous and one aspect uh, of this initiative is to bring in investment uh, from elsewhere. And in this regard, we have this initiative called SDG Impact, where we try to broker the um, partnership between the uh, government and the private sector. The initial step is uh, to map the um, um, policy and uh, development priorities uh, of Nigeria at the national level, the state level and uh, sector level. Participants at the three-day intensive workshop deliberated and reviewed actions on what has been done and what is left to be done, especially with regards to the prioritized SDGs, which are SDGs 1, reducing poverty, SDGs 3, on quality health and well-being for all, and 4, on quality and inclusive education. Findings from the workshop will also help in preparation of the Nigeria's voluntary national reports due for presentation at the United Nations High Level Political Forum scheduled for July this year. We have a report. Key stakeholders at the three-day workshop evaluated Nigeria's performance on the three prioritized SDGs. SDG 1, which is strictly tied to the National Social Investment Program, NSIP, and to the ERGP. SDG 3, links to the Nigeria Strategic Health Development Plan, and SDG 4, implemented through the Nigeria Education Sector Strategic Plan. As the first country in the Global South to have embarked on this process, Nigeria had the opportunity to present its experience at the July 2017 United Nations High Level Political Forum, a yearly meeting of United Nations member countries designed to support implementation and review of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development held in New York. Nigeria will also be at the forum this year to show the world its progress towards the implementation and actualization of the SDGs in all facets of its national development. Findings from the Independent Evaluation Workshop are therefore expected to yield valuable experiences that will assist in the acceleration of the goals in Nigeria, improvement in government accountability, and also provide evidence-based information to include in the voluntary national report. The main instrument identified by the Agenda 2030 for follow-up and review of the SDGs and their targets. Speaking at the workshop, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Orilukwe Adefulure, pledged to work with all stakeholders to ensure the achievement of the 2030 Agenda of leaving no one behind. Princess Adejoke Orilukwe Adefulure also called on all Nigerians to join the present administration's drive to move 100 million people out of poverty in 10 years. A personal commitment to the success of this evaluation exercise and the overall achievement of SDG in Nigeria. You can continue to count on my support anytime, anywhere, and as we commence the decade of action for the people of, and the planet, as we deliberate to discuss, to review the actions and to, ev to evaluate what was done and what is to be done in preparation for the voluntary national report and other activities towards the implementation and achievement of SDG in Nigeria. All hands must be on deck to join and to support Mr. President, the President of Nigeria, who has made commitment that 100 million people will be moved out of poverty in the next 10 years.
Mr. Bala Yunusa, Senior Technical Advisor in the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs in his contribution, noted that evaluation is essential for holding government accountable to citizens and other stakeholders. He therefore noted that the evaluation workshop was designed as a transparent process of assessment of the direction taken by the government towards the achievement of the global goals and the outcomes. The senior technical advisor also noted that with the evaluation, other countries can see the steps taken by Nigeria and the successes that have been recorded and may decide to follow the same steps in their implementation of the SDGs. Nigeria has a huge implementation context for this 2030 agenda. Approximately 190 million people, uh, 923,000 square kilometers divided into 36 states and the federal capital territory and 774 local governments. So our strategic approaches can be seen at two different levels. Uh, at the national level, we work with federal ministries, departments and agencies to ensure we mainstream the relevant SDGs into our sectoral policies and plans. Participants at the workshop were of the opinion that implementation of SDGs should be part of government's political program consequently, should be aligned with national priorities. They also emphasized that while it is important to take actions towards the achievement of the goals, periodic evaluation of national efforts and progress as carried out at the workshop are also essential to measure progress. The difference with monitoring is that we not only, in evaluation, we not only produce data and evidence, we, we underline the reasons behind, the, behind those data and evidence. And for doing that, it's important an analysis of what works, for whom, why, and under what circumstances. And that is the uh, peculiarity of evaluation. That's, that's the value added of evaluation. So it's not just important to produce data, but to interpret the data in a way that we understand what are the types of changes that we are making, who is being benefiting from those, etc. The focus of the SDGs 3 evaluation to assess the effectiveness and impact of the health sector strategic plan's contribution towards achieving the SDGs 3 healthy lives in Nigeria and learn from past experiences and state comparative advantages. Uh, the SDG addresses all the three dimensions of development, namely the economic, social, and the environmental. And achieving these SDGs will contribute to all the population. Uh, goal three, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being uh, for all at all ages. Uh, that is the goal we are going to look at essentially. The evaluation is for goal three. Remember, you can always watch this program and other episodes by subscribing to our YouTube channels on youtube.com forward slash fresh news TV and youtube.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. You can also watch the program live on Facebook. Just log on to www.facebook.com forward slash fresh news NG and www.facebook.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. Follow us on all our social media platforms at agenda 2030 TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Remember to drop your comments and share with your contacts. You use the hashtag Agenda2030 and hashtag Agenda2030TV. And that has been the size of our program this week. Do keep a date with us next week as we bring you another refreshing episode. I am Tony Nkamiang John. Thank you for staying with us.